gotta turn this off. Excuse me. One second now. All right. Let me get myself together here. Hello, people. It's um, Monday, the 1st of August, and it's the afternoon here. I was kind of thinking I would <clears throat> not be not bother with the video today. And then I got um, got some good news regarding uh, what I do here on the channel, so I thought I would go ahead and uh, wake up a little bit and prep, pep up and share it with you. And then I just got the mail. And Michael, Michael P. Dawson, you surprised me how you share your work with me. This just came in the mail unexpectedly. A vinyl copy of his latest release, Hurdle Turtled Out of Heaven. I love it. On his label, Elephant Shrew Music. And this is a lovely. I just got it, so I haven't spun this, although I've listened to this on CD. It is so much fun to uh, listen to music when you drop the needle, as well as listening to it in beautiful claret, clear fidelity through digital as well. So, cheers everyone. Hope you're alright. I'm doing okay. Really doing more than okay. Really very thankful. Very feeling very very grounded and thankful. So the way that the, the interviews are going uh, on the channel here is wonderful because it's so organic and nothing is forced and um, and and it's people people that I really want to uh, want to talk to which is wonderful you know and so I just kind of have been following my uh, gut as far as who to contact personally and when and so I just heard back just now from um, from Richard Barbieri of Porcupine Tree well that's how he's known these days um, I'm blown away you know because I know he's very busy and that's what he said I'd love to have a chat but let me get back to you regarding uh, scheduling and I said oh, wow awesome you know and I said well of course I understand you're very busy with the band right now so that's wonderful news and um, Richard is someone who I have been listening to for a long time. Greatly respect going going back to his days in the band, this band, Japan. All along, besides David Sylvian here on the front and the bass player McCarn, who are both very important to the sound, was has also been the drummer Steve Jansen. David Sylvian's brother and Richard Barbieri on keyboards with a very unique approach to um, the synthesizer because as he has said many times he is not a noodly player that you know keyboard player he really hardly knew how to play when he started with the band Japan in the first place so he's developed technique and atmosphere and sculpting sound and He's done a really amazing job in this album here, Tin Drum, Japan's last album that they made. Was this 1981, something like that? Yeah, 1981. This still is a standout classic. I, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's very influential. The band in Japan were very influential. Um, many bands, including Duran Duran, uh, took quite a few notes from looking at and listening to Japan and this is a landmark album and in no small part because of the keyboard sounds which is a combination of Richard Barbieri and um, David Sylvian but of course Richard, Richard is uh, 
leading the charge. He's such a humble guy, you know, and yet I think he's just a, a super large talent. So I'm kind of going on about him because I'm really happy that he said he he would love to chat. This is another one of his uh, solo albums, Things Buried. This is just some of the coolest stuff. And when this came out a couple years ago, or was it last year, um, Under a Spell, it's one of my albums of the year for that year. So very cool about that. Um, I'll let you know when the uh, interview is going to be happening. It also has called me. I've been thinking in my mind since listening to the new Porcupine Tree and really uh, appreciating it to get back to this because again this is one of their albums that is where and Stephen Wilson admitted that he was at a point where he felt like he was repeating himself a bit which is not to say that this is any good the incident excuse me the name of this album and so that's that's what I'm going to do is um I haven't listened to this in a while, and I liked it when it came out, but it was a bit of a, a bit of a repeat of um, what he had just done the album before in many ways, but um, again, done really well. But I said, yeah, it's time to um, it's time to revisit that today, and after hearing from Richard, even more so, it excites me to um, to do that. What I was listening to that I had to stop was this band, Single Gun Theory. Are they Canadian? Flow, River of My Soul. Um, I like this when it came out. Late 80s at 90s. Uh, 1984. You know, I have to get my peepers here. 94. See, I have to get my peepers. Yeah, I thought so. 94. I like the sound, and I kind of like the... Uh, slightly spiritual, you know, tint to some of the, the words and the feeling. I have some CDs sitting out. I actually listened to this the other day, and I'll show it because I really enjoyed it. Oval, 94 Discount. This is, um, came out in like 95 or 96. And it's a work made out of, um, broken and uh, um, bad CD, CDs that, and, and, and equipment that is failing. Interesting premise that most, mostly it's interesting. It's not like you're hearing your CD jammed in the CD player. It's like you somehow found a way to take certain things that happen and make tones interesting out of it. So that's the main thing I want to share. Looking here, down here at my pile here. Um, the only other thing I'll say is that Kate Bush just had a, a birthday, and I listened to this album, uh, The Sensual World. Speaking of Mick, Mick Karn of Japan, he played bass on this album. This is kind of a masterpiece. This woman is just really quite creative, and yes, she creates like almost like fairy tales fantasies you know complete with characters and sound so i won't go on that's really hello family hello friends hello everybody like i said this is not my morning energy energy although it's been a pretty good day and um Overall, th like I said, things are good, you know. I mean, life on the planet is in, in a very strange phase, you know, with the, oh, the, the you know, clum um, catastrophic weather that people are having to deal with. You know, floods, you know. But my basic outlook on life is one of, of thanks. Being very thankful for how things are. Okay, I'll talk to you.